Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight I'm gonna to do a quick little uh, overview and review of some more products that Comgrow sent me. Uh, they've sent me their latest uh, enclosure, which is the tallest enclosure they make. I've got already got two different sizes. This one is gonna be their large enclosure. And when they say large guys, they mean large. Uh, this thing is huge. Uh, also inside the enclosure, I've got their new camera mount which I'm pleasantly surprised with the, uh, the way it was built and the performance of the camera and light burn. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around, we'll be right back. This guy is definitely the biggest enclosure that I've ever had here in the shack. Uh, they also sent me with the enclosure they sent me the the camera and i've got all that put on i've got everything put together uh, you'll notice that it has a window here but it's relatively uh, small compared to the size of the machine uh, this enclosure does zip up all the way to the back that's actually how you put it together uh, one thing that i have noticed that's pretty cool is it has this nice little pouch over here and I'm actually using a power pack to, to power the light that came with it. And it's got a little pocket right there that you can put it in. Uh, it does have uh, exhaust ports on both sides. It has wiring ports on both sides that have Velcro flaps. Uh, as you can see, the interior of it, I do like the reflective interior. Uh, it doesn't kill the lighting inside the enclosure as bad as some of the dark, in, the, the dark interior. Uh, it kind of looks like a fire blanket. But... Uh, other than that, it's a, 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 in my opinion, it's a little bigger than I might have uh, designed it if I was designing it. But I will say, if you're, if you're working with kind of a low work area, uh, it does give you plenty of room. <laughs> I can't argue that. Uh, there's plenty of room for the camera. I've got the Comgro Z1 with the large Comgro uh, honeycomb. And I've got the camera on it. So this, this pretty much this whole rig here is uh calm grow so the build was fairly easy the 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 camera mount does work with both the according to the book it comes with the hardware for both the z1 and the x tool d1 uh, the mounting is on the back of the frame it basically mounts to the frame and just becomes an extension to the machine uh, fairly simple put together it is very sturdy uh, this thing's not going to be swaying or moving unless you're really getting after it. Uh, the way the foot is built, it appears to me you could also mount that on a tabletop or an enclosure uh, with a couple of screws if you wanted to. So multiple ways of mounting it. The plate that's on the back of the, on the, back of the machine, uh, pretty versatile, it's got a lot of adjustment in it. So you would probably could configure it to uh, bolt up to almost any machine, especially if on the back side, if the machine has this channel that the Comgrow uses, uh, the way it attaches is there's nuts that go inside this channel. And then when you put that plate up there, the screws go through the plate and connect to these nuts and it pulls tight against that uh, extrusion there. So fairly simple design, fairly solid. Uh, they, they did go extra bulky with the tubing, which just makes it that much stronger, but it's got that contour to it. So it stays out of the way. All together, uh, I like the, the build, but let me, uh, I've got the calib I did the calibration on the camera and I've got that uh, set up. So I'm just going to show you how well this thing targets using the camera over here. All right, guys. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this circle right here and I'm going to make it about the same size as this circle that you see on the screen here. And I'm going to try using the camera and the camera only. I'm just going to update that overlay. I'm gonna to try to put this circle on top of the other one and just kind of like we're doing some target practice here and we'll see how this thing aims. Uh, like I said, I've just run one calibration on the camera after I got it installed and this is the results I'm getting. So I'm gonna update the overlay before I move that, that burn so you can see. All right, as you can see, it's not hanging out from underneath the burn, there it is. So I'm gonna place it right over here and we're gonna do that same thing. And I'm gonna update the overlay after it's, uh, after it's burned. All right, so let's update the overlay. 
And see, you're not seeing the circle, which means it should be directly beneath this. And there it is. And if I, if, if I take it, I move around the work area, guys. I mean, it's, it's pretty accurate all over the workspace. You can go over here. Let me change this cut a little bit. Make it darker so we can see it a little better. So I'm going to run that over there and see what happens. I don't have my air assist on, so it's not burning this so This is that older plywood that I have. And it's not burning it as dark as it would if it had the air assist on it. But I had to move everything, so I didn't want to I didn't want to have to drag the air assist over too. Alright, so I'm gonna update the overlay. This is where this is where we marked for it to burn right there, guys. Uh and this is to the far right side of the workspace, so very very little deviation there so I'm gonna take this little dot and I'm gonna move it up to the top of the workspace and we'll do the same thing just kind of seeing what the deviation is from the location of the burn and the actual burn itself on the camera so I'm gonna zoom back down before I update I'm gonna update the overlay you can see just a just a faint amount right there where it's it's splashing out from behind them the marker so we'll move this down here on the far left side of the uh, workspace and let's see what it does there this part of the camera view just kind of it just kind of messes with me i want to i really want to make this upright but it's not affecting the work performance of it See, it's, it's got a little more, it's a little, little more hanging out now, so, so that's, uh, but that's not bad, not at all. Uh, light burn cameras are a tool, they're not 100% accurate all the time. Uh, what I will do is, let me take this little piece of, little piece of wood right here, put, throw it in the work area update the overlay and I'm gonna try to make a circle just using the camera and I'm gonna do it as a line so let me change that and what I want to do is just using the camera I'm gonna basically pretend that we're trying to engrave something that we have uh, in the workspace using nothing but the camera just to see how helpful it is uh, when you're lining things up so I need to bring that down to about 90 see if that's no, that's not quite hitting the edge so we'll go with 85 all right so according to the camera guys that has us right around the edge of the material. So I'm just gonna fire this and see if this was a real life scenario, how close to uh, correct it would be. All right, as you can see, the bottom was a little high and I'm gonna move it up in front of the camera so you can see it. The bottom was just a little high and it kind of came off the top. So that's probably within three, three millimeters or so. So it would be, it's, it's, it's obviously it was right as far as the size of the object, not 100% on placement, but that's pretty much every camera I've ever had in light burn. I mean, you're gonna have, you're gonna have some variation. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for the, this video. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, the camera and the enclosure and then you know you kind of get a look glimpse at my Z1 again too uh, the uh, all the stuff that is in this video including the enclosure the camera the machine uh, the honeycomb the whole nine yards I will drop links in the description that you can use to go to Congrove's website and that is where uh, these things are uh, Congrove did send them out to me uh, to try out 
The enclosure is a bit big for what I do. Uh, I have my own built enclosures, and I don't see that I'll be uh, you know, necessarily needing this enclosure in the shop. But if you're if you're somebody who has 3D printers as well as lasers, and you're using your machines and swapping them out into the enclosures, uh, it would definitely give you a lot more elevation for, say, a 3D printer. Uh, also, if you have this camera mount, you're going to have to have a pretty tall enclosure to uh, to kind of work with the with the camera mount. So that might be something that you want to consider. If you do go with this camera, then you're probably going to need the overhead. Uh, the camera on this guy. Like I said, it's, it, it is not a bad camera. Uh, it has pretty good uh, characteristics as far as the image quality is pretty good. It picks up pretty good in the lighting. Uh, I really don't have anything bad to say just yet about it. Uh, I will have to use it a few more times to, to, to get a little more idea. But it looks a lot like the uh, board cameras that I used in my original enclosures. So I'm pretty sure it's probably the same focal length and all that. Uh, the 20 inches, the 20 to 22 inch height of the camera kind of indicates that it's, it's, it's going to be the same focal length because everything seems to be focusing well on the computer. It works with light burn. The setup process wasn't hard. The only thing that I can honestly say that, that kind of bugs me is the, the orientation of the image on the right side of light burn. Uh, but that's just, that's a pet peeve of mine. Once you run the calibration, uh, it will display appropriately in the workspace so not a big big deal there but anyway guys don't forget uh, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and thanks for coming have a good day